I think we're live. Aluka, welcome to uh, everything and uh, welcome to the first show. I think we are we are officially live. Great. <laughs> so, hello everybody. Uh, I am Raluca Sljuchita. I am Women International Master from Romania. And in today's show, we will see some chairs. Okay. Uh, we are going to see some chairs and. Okay. Is everything okay? I, I wait a second. One second, I think I have to. Okay, sorry about the a little glitch. <laughs> okay, uh, it's better now. I just heard everything with lag. So today we are uh, going to see some chess. We are going to discuss some games. Go through some. Uh, critical moments, um, see some mistakes that I sometimes see in the games um, of my students that are um, perhaps rated under 1800, under 2000. Um, this is going to be an interactive lesson. This is Johan and he will be my live student today. <laughs> but uh, I am going to take questions from you. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. I apologize in advance if I'm, I'm, I will miss any of them, but I hope I will be able to, to see everything <laughs> at, at once. Mm, okay, so let's see what we have here. What we see now, what you see now on the screen is the Code Chess platform. That's the new platform of Chess24, the new coaching platform that will launch pretty soon. It will be available both for coaching and students, so you will be able to sign up and uh, find a coach for yourself. You can already join the waiting list. I will be one of the coaches, so, you know, <laughs> you can only, you can already sign up if you would like to book uh, any lessons in the future. Um, okay, the, um, the video that you see is also incorporated in the coaches platform, so one of the good things is that you won't need to, uh, to use uh, Skype or any other uh, additional program besides the platform. So yeah, I think it's it's going to be really nice. It has many interesting features. I can't wait to try them all myself. I have just been playing around and it looks uh, amazing so far. Yeah, and it's, it's exciting to have you uh, doing these uh, first lessons. So look, I've really been looking uh, forward to it. Um, yeah, so, so welcome on board. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, uh, happy to do this. Um, okay, so what about, let's see some chess now, yeah? Uh, enough with the introduction. Yeah. Um, the first thing that I wanted to... Or maybe we um, really need the weaknesses in the position and... Uh, uh, and so on. So the first, I have chosen uh, examples from my games only today. I think that that will be more fun. But so I, I can tell you my thoughts during the game and and see what's what's going on here. Um, okay, this position uh, happened in one of my in my game of my games. I think uh, maybe two years ago in the Benasque Open in Spain, uh, one of my favorite opens, by the way. And here it was my turn to play. Okay, we have this. Uh, position where things look um, interesting. No, uh, that's that's a really nice position. I have a, a really nice rook on a7. I'm looking at this uh, pawn on c7. That's uh, that is a weakness in Black's position. Mm. There is also this pawn on d4. That's kind of weak. So I have a really good rook. Uh, my queen is not really doing anything. Basically now on e1. It's just taking care of the king, uh, trying to fend off any future threats that will happen. My big problem here is that I have a very weak king, but uh, this was uh, an English 
started as an English, and uh, you probably know that in this case, each side is trying to attack on, on, on their flanks. So Black has been trying to attack me on the king side, and I have been trying to create weaknesses on the, on the queen side. So far, it seems that things went well for both sides, I would say. Um, so in this position, I went for the move queen d2. I am, okay, threatening some vile things here. I'm going to go queen f5 and try to get black's rook. So of course, black has to find a way to, to stop that. And I think this is, our, this is exactly our first uh, point, uh, the first moment that we are going to stop. Uh, it's kind of a critical moment for black. So I would like to ask you, what would you do here with black? I'm going to flip the board so it's easier for you to, to follow this. So how should black stop this threat or how should he continue? What, what are his plans here, perhaps? I'm going to give you a few a few minutes. I'm going to check the chat and see what ideas you come up with. I think it's a very interesting position. Uh, for someone on my level, it's probably um, it's probably also some very interesting positions to, to learn from these. Yeah, here, um, that, that's exactly why I chose this moment, because it's not so easy to continue with black. But uh, if you understand the features of this position and the way that each side should be playing next, I think uh, you'd be able to, to play the right move during the game. So what, what I really would like for you to come up with some moves, um, See, see your thoughts here. I'm going to check. Uh, try to check everything. Anyway. Let me know if you want me to answer. Of course, I would like answer. you to answer as well. I would like some input from you as well, since you are here. Yeah. You are the, the main student. <laughs> <laughs> to me... Perhaps there are two different options, um, but I'm not sure. Boom, boom, boom. I think maybe um, can I draw on the board as well? I yeah, I think so. You should be able to do that. Let me check if I got yeah, that on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think maybe the bishop here um, could be an interference move um, to prevent uh, the queen to go here. All right. uh, and an other option mm, that I was thinking about was simply to uh, bring the rook over. Um, yeah. But like to f8, right? Sorry. Rook f8, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's one option. Okay. Perhaps you can um, uh, continue. Yeah, I'm just checking to see if I if I get any more uh, answers here. So we're going to go with rook f8 and bishop f4 here, right? These were were the two. Um, there's also the option of moving the king that we should identify here, right? If you don't want to the double check to happen, you can do that. And then there's perhaps a fourth option to offer the queen straight with queen f6, which also stops queen f5. Mm. Um, yeah, the game continues with queen f6. Uh, we are going to discuss that, that last. But here I think, um, let's start with, uh, with rook f8. What happens if black goes rook f8? Mm. It's difficult for me to see any immediate uh, counter threats from uh, from white here, uh, but I'm probably missing something. Um, yeah, here we should look at, at white's possibilities, right? So the queen is under attack. Obviously, the first thing you would look at is move the queen. Mm. Uh, then, okay, cover the queen, but that wouldn't make much sense, right? Put the bishop on a three is 
that bishop is really nice on, on b5, you wouldn't want to do that. And then, as you mentioned, counter threats. So what can you find in that category? Mm -hmm. Let me see if there's anything. Uh, could the rook just uh, take the rook on the a7? Could that just take the pawn? On c7? Rook a7. Yes, that, that's uh, that's an option here. We have to look at the active moves like uh, captures and so on. And rook a7 seems to seems interesting because the queen is doing too many things in this position. It defends the rook and defends uh, the pawn on c7. And after rook takes c7. I think black just loses uh, a pawn. Right? Let's see. Rook takes c7. And right now, if rook takes f2, then uh, just rook takes c7, and that's check. So the rook on f2 will uh, will also fall. Yeah. That would be really bad for <laughs> black. And yes, if queen takes uh, c7, then just queen takes f8. And this should be much better for white because the queen is now very active. Uh, of course, there's white's a pawn up, but uh, now we can see that white can use also the weakness of the, of the black king. Right? With the queen on a fade, it's easier to start uh, attacking this king. So that, or let's go back there, for starting position. So that means that we are going to ignore rook uh, a fade. means that we don't want to play that. So we have um, the rest of the options. So maybe bishop f4, maybe king g7. There's also the option of moving the rook someplace else, not f8. Like maybe rook d8 uh, or perhaps rook e8. That would also work, so you just stop the threat. Um, I think the best move for black here would be to simply move the king, but I think uh, everything else works, basically. Um, rook f8 is uh, a big mistake here. And the move played in the game, queen f6, I think is not a losing mistake, but I would say it's a dubious move because black is giving up um, basically what he had in this position. So when we looked in the beginning at the position, uh, we identified weaknesses in black's position, like in the structure. That's positional chess, uh, that has to do with strategy. And in white's position, the weakness right now is the king, um, that can be, let's say, easier to attack than the black king, which is not exactly very covered either, but white cannot create threats there and is uh, focusing on, on black structure. So this means uh, that black should try to play dynamically here, and he should try to keep uh, the queens on the board and create counterplay, because if he trades pieces, then it will be easier for white to attack the weaknesses, which is which is a static positional advantage. And um, even if the position will not be lost, white will have a slight advantage and it will be only white that can keep pressing further. So this is probably something you want to avoid during the games. Uh, identify well the weaknesses and see what you have to play for. And in this case, let's go, for example, with king to g7. Give me one second. King to g7. And here the threat is uh, rook to f8 already because now the rook will be defended by the king. So black can activate his pieces. And now my rook on a7 is uh, pretty because it looks at c7, but it's, not, uh, it's nothing more than pretty, right? The c7 square doesn't seem to be so important in this position. So, okay, at least it doesn't allow the black king to move uh, from e7, but uh, I won't be able to put a further pressure, pressure on that square. That would be it. I'll have to move my queen away probably, and then black can continue uh, with the threats against the king. So the best thing for white to do in this position is probably to take the draw with queen f5. I say take the draw because here, after rook f8, uh, white has to find rook takes c7 to 
make a perpetual. And in this case, uh, what I want to get is the pawn on g5. So after rook, queen takes, uh, queen takes g5, king h7, queen h5, mm. this will be a draw. The thing is that if white allows this rook f8, um, the position will become complicated uh, to defend. Yeah. So, would it be possible to like for someone like me? Um, who found this move interesting. Would it be possible yeah. to, to have a look at this as well? Yeah, I think this bishop f4 is also is actually also very interesting because it, it stops the threat. And um, probably what I have to do in this position... It also okay, the, the immediately like uh, has this threat in it. In, in the next move. Um. Bishop e3 is the idea, but uh, thankfully I have the knight there, so that's not... But I'll probably have to move my king away. I think bishop f4 is also an interesting option here. So maybe something like king h1, and probably the idea in this case would be to bring the queen, right? I'll leave the rook on c8, defend the pawn, and maybe queen e5 could be the follow-up. I think here black could build uh, further, right? Like queen e5. And at some point, I think uh, there could be interesting ideas involving rook e8 and giving up the pawn on c7. But of course, black would have to prepare for that. Move the king away from h7. Mm. Yeah. And um, But what you notice is that uh, in both cases, black plays dynamically, right? He yeah. should try to play against the king. This is, I think, that the key uh, idea that has to be understood in this position. I'm going to flip the board back so we see now the game from White's perspective. And let's check queen f6, which, as I said, is not, is not losing, but I think is simply a bad decision from this point of view. Because after this move, I will just have um, a lot of pressure against black spawns and black will, will not find it so easy to create counterplay. What you have to look when you offer it trades or when you consider trades, um, you have to look uh, at the pieces that will remain on the board, not necessarily on the pieces that you take off, but what remains now on the board. If the queens are off the board, then what remains is a very strong rook on a7 right now versus a bad rook on c8. So, how are you going to create counterplay with black in this case? Um, I will have uh, an awkward knight on f1, but this one can be improved now. It doesn't have to stay there and defend the king anymore. The knight on c5 is, again, a cute piece, but it's not necessarily doing anything. Yeah, it's, it has a nice square. That's the only thing. And uh, so does the bishop on e5. Maybe this bishop could be improved uh, eventually to e3. And uh, this is... This could be an interesting idea in the future. Um, but uh, taking the queens off the board, I think, is a mistake here. Uh, after queen takes, let's see how the game continued. Bishop takes. Now let's try to find a way for white to continue. Let's try to find a plan. How should white try to um, put pressure here? Mm. Mm, yeah, it's probably to um, my idea would be probably something in the lines of distracting the the rook on a c8. Yeah. Um, and a good way to do it would be with the white squared uh, bishop or the bishop that you have as the white position. But the knight, the black knight, is basically covering. Uh, all of the squares that you have to uh, go to in order to to do that, it seems. That's that's correct. So you you, you won't be able to do that. Um, all right. So um, the bishop. What what else? What else is there? So definitely one piece that is not playing at all for white is the well the two pieces. But the 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 knight seems as a 
as a as a very lonely as a very lonely horse. Uh, yes, almost that, that's down right. <laughs> so I don't know if there would be some ideas about bringing um, bringing the knight into the game. I think this is a very good observation, and uh, you have to take care of your pieces at at all moments. Uh, make sure that they are happy <laughs> in the mm -hmm. position. Uh, the bishop is happy on d5. Of course, if you notice something immediate, uh, you should go for it. But uh, as you said, it, that's that's not possible right now. The rook is happy on a7. The only unhappy pieces are these two. Uh, it will be more difficult to start with the king. So it makes sense to find a good square for the knight. Now, in this position where nothing is happening, uh, you don't necessarily have to think uh, on in moves. Like You don't have to necessarily calculate here. Yeah. You will have to only check if you don't that you don't plunder anything or that you don't uh, hang a piece, don't you know get mated in uh, in some in a few moves. But you can already think in ideas and uh, try to imagine where or how you would like to have your pieces positioned. So you mentioned the knight. Where exactly would you like to have the knight? Mm, I think there are couple of squares that I have identified as uh, as strong but but what I what, what I tend to do is uh, is also what you have mentioned here about these uh, like uh, pieces that that could potentially yeah they could potentially look very cute but it's not necessarily uh, meaning that they are oh, very good yeah. but I think um, this square uh, the f5 square looks uh, very interesting for the night um, okay. Um, because it would be covered by a pawn, um, and also uh, this square. The square c6. Yeah. Both are nice squares, but um, we have discussed in the beginning about the weaknesses in Black's position. Let's uh, take a brief look at those. So there's a, a weakness on c7, right? Yeah. There's a weakness on d on d4. Uh, there's a weakness on g5, perhaps a bit more difficult to attack, but these are the three main ones, right? Yeah. Uh, now, you already have a piece attacking c7, so my idea in this game was that it would make sense to bring the knight to a square that would uh, attack c7 as well. So c6, as you mentioned, is a really nice square as well, but... At some point, I thought that even if d5 could be a good square for the knight, because if I want to attack c7, I could maybe move the bishop and put the knight instead. Now, the, the f5 square is just a, a cute square. I, I'm not sure that the knight will have help here. Besides, it's very difficult to get there. You'll need to get through e3 or g3, and that's, that's impossible, right? Mm. Uh, you'll have to uh, trade some pawns here, but that's not... Uh, probably the idea. You don't want to help black uh, get rid of this weakness on d4. So I wouldn't want to push the pawn on e3, uh, trade that just to bring the knight to f5. Also, if I trade this pawn, the bishop comes to life. It will be more active. That's also something I would like to avoid. Mm. So I think uh, the two squares, c6 and d5, could be interesting. Um, I also got the idea of getting to the square a6. Because even if my knight uh, gets straight off for, for his knight, then I will be able to take back with the pawn. And then, OK, I don't have the knight, and I won't play for the witness, but I get something in return. Yeah. I get the passed pawn. I uh, look like a very powerful pawn. All right, now uh, everything that we need to do is find a route for the knight. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Na knight routes. <laughs> Um, okay, before I start making any drawings, uh, let me try to see if I can do it. Do you actually have to go to h2 first? Um, all right, h2 and then f3 you want? Yeah. Is that... Okay, what's your route? You can start making arrows if you want. Have some fun. Oh, I'm not sure that I dare to make arrows now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Basically, what... how, how I like to think about this is uh, from start to start from the end. So if I want to get to c6 or d5, I'd like to start with the square that 
uh, makes these jumps possible. So mm. that's, there's only one square. So that's B4. And that's how I usually like to to start my night routes to make sure that they are um, they, they are possible. Yeah, and I, I never thought about that, but that's uh, I think that's a very good tip for me because I have as I struggle so much with the with these night routes. Uh, but that's probably a very good uh, tip for me. That's that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what would be a good route? So it would mean that I would e either have to land on uh, on A2 or mm -hmm. C2. Yeah. And C2 would be from E2 and that would be from uh, G2. Okay, here, here, here. Okay, so perhaps, perhaps this makes sense. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like this. That's a nice route, right? <laughs> Is it slow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the idea here. You have to improve your worst place piece. That's the night, and uh, look for Black's weaknesses, and that's how you find what to do in your position in static positions. We are talking about positions where nothing is happening. If Black would mate you, then okay, that's a different story. You, you wouldn't be able to do this. So here I went for the move knight d two. You are right, and I chose this square because it's more central. You mentioned H2 in the, the beginning. I'm not sure if there's any big difference, but D2 looks um, closer to, to the center, to, to everything else. I don't really want to allow, I don't know, maybe knight B3 for, for black would be if I go with my, if I take my knight too far. Not sure if it works, but who knows, maybe knight B3, knight C1. It always makes sense to keep your pieces towards the center. So knight D2, and now my opponent goes bishop e5. I thought this makes a lot of sense uh, because for this bishop, a good square would be e3. Uh, my king could still be a target. It won't be so easy without the queens, but I think black should keep playing for counterplay here because if he just waits, um, my idea is clear. I'm going to get my knight over there and then it's going to be over because the pawn on c7 uh, is not easy to defend. So bishop e5 is uh, is a good move here. I continued with knight f3, now bishop f4. And I hear I could have gone knight e1, but um, I didn't want to make it so obvious for my opponent. Uh, I wanted to to be a bit tricky, you know, not make it obvious that I'm going to go to c, c2. Mm -hmm. and Because if I go knight e1, obviously that knight is going to c2, I think. And he's going to try to find something to stop it. So I thought, what does he want to do with the move bishop f4? And of course he wants to get the, the bishop to, to e3, right? I have to, well, I haven't mentioned this, but I right now the pawn on d4 uh, cannot be captured because of bishop e3, and I would, I would lose my knight. So that's why bishop f4 uh, works in this position. But, um, okay, he wants to put a bishop on e3, and that will be a check. So I will have to move my king anyway. So I said, I decided, okay, I'm going to move my king first. So he doesn't, I confuse him a little bit, perhaps during the game. It's always a good idea to play a bit, uh, to not be so obvious, maybe during the game. Uh, try to play psychologically, <laughs> if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went for king g2 first, and then knight, knight e1 will still be an idea. Black cannot really stop that. He went for bishop e3, and now knight e1. Okay, here is where black needs to find a good move. You already know why it's idea. So I'll flip the board and I'll ask you to find a defense for black in this position. Now, there any questions uh, from uh, anybody out there also? I haven't seen anything, but... Um, I'm not sure if, uh, if my chat on YouTube is... Is frozen or <laughs> anything? Uh, if that's working, I, I, I because I don't see any any comments there. I do see some comments on chess twenty four, but I would love if they would be related to chess so I can use them. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, needs to counter this. Sorry. 
Black needs to counter this. Uh... Black needs to counter this. That's that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned the idea before about moving uh, the king away, but it, that also seems like how many moves does the white knight uh, need now uh, to get there? That's three moves, right? Three knight moves. c2, knight and maybe knight a6, I suppose I go to a6. Mm. So would it be an idea to simply forget about uh, forget about the, the c pawn? Mm -hmm. And and then try to create a, an attack on uh, the weakest square in uh, White's position, which I, yes. I, I think is I think. Uh, e2. So I think that's a good idea. So how would you start that? I would prepare for the move uh, rook to uh, e8. Mm -hmm. um, there's of course also the possibility of. Uh, simply attacking it with the knight. Okay. Um, if I should draw, I guess the knight can can jump here. Mhm. Mm um, and another way to put pressure is to deploy the the rook on e two, but it would mean that you need to move the knight because of of this bird here. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, in order for the rook to attack this, it's only attacking it indirectly now, so you would need to, to move the, the bishop as well. Um, so that sounds like uh, a lot of things that you need to do. Yes. <laughs> and I think that what you have to look for here is how will white respond to all these threats? How will how will I defend the square e2? Yeah, and that's also, that's all, I guess that also is quite easy. Uh, with both the king and the, the bishop, right? Bishop f3 looks like a good defense, so I don't get onto the onto the f file, so you can activate your book. But I think just bishop f3 will should do the trick and defend e2. Okay. So, so maybe try to improve your plan. Hmm. So the plan is right. The plan is right, but don't forget about the problems in White's position. The square e2 is weak, but the problem that White had from the beginning was the king. And you could still try to create counterplay against the king. It's not too mm. late if you activate <coughs> your pieces right now. Okay, so perhaps um, still preparing uh, for the rook to, uh, to to give up the, the C pawn, but instead perhaps moving the rook to um, to uh, F uh, F eight instead. And if you yes, that would be the idea. And someone is suggesting here on in the chat to go King G six because they noted very well that if you go Rook F eight, then Rook C seven is going to be is going to come with check, so you won't have time to get your rook. So you have you need to prepare this. This rook f8 idea. So yeah. if I, I'm going to just put the rook here, I think uh, king g6 is a very strong move here. If you want to play for counterplay, the idea would be to go king g6, rook f8, and the threat will be rook f2. And the threats will just keep coming. Uh, I will be able to defend with bishop f3, and we will take a look at this line right now because it has some interesting moments. Yeah. So after king g6, suppose I, I go ahead with my plan, knight c2. Uh, rook f8. Now taking the bishop on e3 uh, wouldn't make much sense because, all right, I get rid of the bishop, but then there's a pawn coming instead. That's not a great, uh, a great thing for me either. So suppose I try to go bishop f3 instead. Okay? How should black continue here? Would it make sense to try to exchange pieces here? 
to exchange the knight for the uh, for the bishop. Maybe that's also a long way off, or too slow. That seems that seems too slow because uh, yeah, you trade and what what then? In the meantime, I will get your pawn from c7. Mm. That's under attack, and maybe get to attack another of your pawns, maybe d6 and b6. Mm -mm. Remember always about your the sad pieces in the position. Yeah. Make them happy. Yeah, and I guess the the knight again is uh, is feeling a little bit lonely. A little bit, right? It's all alone yeah. on the queen side. It would like to, it would love to join the attack on, on the king side. Yeah. What would be a nice square for the knight then? Yeah, my my thought was that that the uh, f4 square would be nice. Um, yeah. But that would I also so. it would also block the the idea with the with the rook. But perhaps that's not a, a problem. Um, the thing is that after putting the knight on f4, uh, you're threatening the pawn on h3. So, okay, rook f2 was not possible here anyway. So if you bring the knight now, uh, there's uh, a threat over the king and a threat against the pawn on h2. So mm -hmm. imagine the knight is on f4. You, would, you could say, okay, but the king goes to g2 and that's over. No, it's not over. Try to look further. What black... If you can imagine that. There's a knight on f4 and a king on h2. What move would black have in that position? <laughs> I would love some help from me if there's <laughs> anybody out there. Come on, the tactics. Tactics. So let me try to see. The knight is here. The knight is on f4, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, okay, you can just still take the the e pawn with the knight, right? Because Yeah, uh, uh, someone someone is suggesting the knight take d3, but I think knight e2 is the move. Um, we'll see what happens. I will get to that position. But knight e2 is the right way to go. Uh, knight d3 doesn't actually work. Maybe you can find out why yourself. Which one does not work? Sorry. Knight takes the knight takes the three. Let me let me let me just take some arrows from here. I, the king is on h two, the knight is on f four, and we are looking at knight takes b three in, in that position. Mm. Uh, why doesn't that work? Perhaps you can uh, you can tell me because uh, I'm not sure that I can uh, I can see it. Uh, there is a, okay when you try to calculate uh, the obvious move will be to take the knight back, but that's uh, that's easy to see that the, the rook just takes the bishop on d3, so it uh, it doesn't work. Um, you could also look for other ideas uh, in between moves. And here, if you see that the threat is against the bishop, if you try to make a move with the bishop, you'll probably find the move bishop mm. uh, f e f4 check, and then the bishop can simply capture the knight. So the move is uh, 96 here, as you are suggesting, and I see some more suggest suggestions here in the chat. So 96, the idea is knight f4, and this also defends the square c7. And, okay, suppose I go knight d4, then you could go knight f4 check. Uh, the king will have to go to uh, h1. And here, uh, as someone was suggesting, you don't really have to hurry. You could even go rook f7 and uh, defend, defend the pawn. The thing is that um, now you want to take on h3. The pawn on h3 is hanging all the time, so you don't have to take that and allow the rook to get into play here you know, uh, before. Like in this position, you don't don't really have to go for knight takes h3 right away, but you can first take care of this pawn on c7. And here white has two options. So if we saw that we want to attack c7, there's knight a6, but here knight a6 uh, fails. There are some tactics working after knight takes h3, so called rook takes, 
and here there is this very nice idea that uh, you, you wouldn't be able to see from the beginning. I'm just showing you this line because here there are some interesting ideas, but when you are in a game, you cannot make, you can probably not make all of this work. But you see that you get some counterplay and you see the idea, you probably know the idea of knight e6, knight f4, and you'll see that you get some active play. And then you, you start thinking again while you advance through the variations. And here, when you get here, you will see that uh, rook f3 is a very nice idea. The thing is that now this knight is out of play here on a6. And after pawn takes, there's knight f2, and black gets so many pawns for, for the exchange. The pawn on h3 is running also, like for example, rook c6, knight f4, and uh, there is plenty of compensation. There are two fast pawns. And I would say that black is probably better here. There's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of threats. So for this reason, when we are in this position, the best move is knight d5, uh, because this move won't allow knight f4 back. Suppose knight takes, so let's check the same line. This one, this move won't work anymore because after check, king g2 takes, I can go rook c6 and now Knight, uh, the square f4 is uh, under control, so knight f4 just takes. Mm. Did you and calculate was, all of this? And that was important. Sorry? Did you calculate all of this in the game? No, of course not. I did not calculate everything <laughs> everything uh, in the mm -hmm. game. I just noticed the idea of king g6 and rook f8. Um, I noticed that this would have been interesting because then the knight is coming to e6, and I assessed that black will have some counterplay. But perhaps even easier than this, um, Black can simply stop the idea of knight c2 because uh, what can you do? You cannot stop knight c2 here, but what you can stop is knight d4. So in order, the bishop now needs to, to defend d4 and needs to defend b4. So uh, this is like a, a sort of correspondence squares in this um, in this position. When the knight is on c2, the bishop would need to be on c3. So when the knight is here, you'd need the bishop here to control both. So the move uh, to king g6 is not the only one here, but there is the more um, quiet one, is bishop d2. And we can take a look at this one here, because after knight c2, there's uh, bishop c3. Of course, the other one gives more counterplay. That it's, uh, the, the game is becomes interesting there. And this one, uh, I would say, keeps the, the game even. The other one is, is really interesting. What black uh, doesn't have to do is that uh, take on f3 in this position, but just uh, continue playing this end game. Okay, uh, that was a lot of uh, interesting uh, <laughs> variations here, so let's go back to the actual game. And I'm going to flip uh, the board again, because my opponent uh, probably missed my idea of going to c2 and went for bishop b4. And you'll be surprised to find out that this position is already lost. So mm. black already has no, no defense against my my next idea. Knight c2 and almost game over. He went for bishop e5 and now we, we do what exactly what we wanted. Knight b4 and knight a6 is coming. He went bishop f6 and now knight a6. Of course here knight takes a6. I will take with the pawn and my next move is rook a8 probably force the trade of rooks, and then I will simply advance the pawn, and and that's that's over. Yeah. So he went for bishop d8 instead in, in the position to defend. How should white finish this off? I guess there are already many ways to do that, but <laughs> let's try to find uh, find one. And if anyone else uh, wants to give uh, good answers to this, uh, feel free to do it. Of course. Should, they, should this be easy to calculate? Because it's yes, such a winning position. I think it's I think it's easy to, to calculate, and you don't 
Okay, here we can probably find the answer uh, with um, applying the positional concepts. You don't really need to uh, calculate too much. So would it make sense to exchange the knights now? Uh, why is the knight very good on... Uh, the knight on c5 is, is look, uh, looks very, very good and it kind of stops the, the idea of uh, attacking the rook with the bishop. Yeah. But then if you mm -hmm. trade the knights, um, the bishop on d8 will defend c7. It might be difficult to, to win this. Maybe it's still possible because the king will advance, uh, so you could get the king to c6 perhaps. Mm. But what I thought here is that the piece that doesn't really help me in the position right now is the, is the bishop on d5. And his very good piece is the knight on c5 right now. It's the only piece uh, that's active. Yeah. So I could force a trade uh, the, for, for the bishop instead. Okay. Instead of trading the knight, I could uh, go for bishop b7. Someone is suggesting this move. This is what I played in the game. Um, the position is very good, so for example here you could just improve the king and you wouldn't be letting the advantage slip. Uh, but I think this is quite uh, forcing. After bishop d7, the rook is trapped, so he has to take. And what I'm going to do is leave him with a bad bishop, this very bad bishop, against a good knight. Uh, mm. Notice how all the pawns are, are on dark squares and the light squares are just... Uh, available for the king to advance. This mm. pawn will be falling in the meantime. He went for king g6, and now rook b8, and the game is more or less over. King f7, king f3, and my opponent resigned here because he realized that after king e4, the pawn on d4 is lost. There's knight c6 coming also, and the king uh, will not stop here. It will eventually advance to f5 or d5, and there are more pawns to pick up. That's uh, probably very difficult and painful to defend, I would say, yeah. for, for black. Okay, I think I had more exercises or more games prepared for today, but I think uh, Magnus is about to start <laughs> uh, his invitational and uh, uh, we probably won't don't want to get uh, in the way of that. I hope this was, this was fun. For me, it was a lot of fun. I hope everybody had as much fun. I don't know, uh, Johan. Yeah. <laughs> Since you are, you are here. Uh, I think it was a great lesson uh, and also a great uh, format. Uh, hopefully, we can get some more uh, suggestions in the chat. They, it seems as if they only started coming uh, a little bit later. Mm. Uh, so, so that would be great. Um, yeah, and and again, if you want the chance to uh, book a lesson with uh, Raluca yourself. Um, a private one-on-one uh, -on -one lesson. You can sign up to the to the coach's uh, waitlist, um, and you can see the link uh, above here on uh, coaches.com. All yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope everybody had had fun with this lesson and learned learned something. Uh, we are open to suggestions. If uh, anybody would like to see any particular topic discussed in the future, that, that would be great. Definitely. All okay. right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. And thank you, Raluca. See you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.